and welcome back. Now this is part two of my component buying guide. Um, we already had a video on this and some of these items here you see have already been described. So let's uh, dive in and look at the ones that we had to omit last time just due to time constraints really. There's some useful stuff here including something that might make you solder your breadboard uh, projects that is the strip board you're going to put your breadboard components on just that tiny little bit better. Stay tuned. So this is a whole set of um, low value capacitors because I was running a little bit short on them. So this was from Banggood. Can't remember how much it cost. Let me see if I can find it. Now, the long and short is I can't find it. It wasn't that expensive though. And once again, if you buy this assortment and they're all fairly low voltage, you know, ideal for Arduino, about 25 volts and lower, um, you get a fair selection. And once you bought this, you probably set for months, if not years, quite frankly, because the average hobbyist just won't use that many capacitors. I've still got capacitors in my workshop that I've had quite literally for 30 years and they're probably useless now because electrolytics break down over time. And an electrolytic in a commercial unit is designed to last for something like 10 years. If you get more than 10 years, it doesn't say it will break down, but it, it, you know, if it breaks down after 10 years, they'll say, well, that's it, you pays your money, you've had 10 years use out of it, which is why industrial units, you know, things like things that go in a lift, for example, they expect a much longer lifespan. So you have to get um, different capacitors rather than using electrolytics if you can, or use very high spec electrolytics. But a box like this, it's cheap, it's got a nice wide selection, ideal for the hobbyist. Now remember with the electrolytic capacitors, the tolerance is appalling. It really is. It's something like minus 50% to plus 100%. And if you're thinking, what? That's right. So if you get a 10 microfarad out, it could be as low as 5 and could be as high as 20 microfarads. That's the trouble with electrolytics. It's better to go sort of tantalum bead or something else. But sometimes only electrolytics go to the value you want. So there we are. And just to cover all the possibilities of capacity you might find, here's a list. Now, one thing I can show you though, I can't show you that one on Banggood, but I, probably because I didn't buy it from Banggood. Well, actually I did buy it from Banggood because I found it now after a bit of searching. So here it is, 200 pieces, 15 different values. So they start from about 0.47 microfarads all the way up to 100 microfarads at various voltages. So there's dual voltage on some of them. So you get the 100, for example, with both uh, 25 volts and 16 volts. So it's 200 pieces, 407 pounds, and that comes to just under $6, which I think is pretty good value for money. Uh, but I can show you this one. I bought this one, 180 pieces assortment heat shrink. Now this is quite good actually. I quite like this one. Um, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. It's getting to the point where I've exceeded the size of my screen now. Well, there we are. So this is um, comes in a box. It's probably probably about as wide, no, a bit wider than this one probably. And it's split up as it shows in that photograph, all different sizes, but not the stupidly big sizes that you get. Sometimes you buy heat shrink, and you get stuff that's like you know two centimeters wide. Well, as hobbyists, we just don't need that. Unlikely anyway. So this is all the small sizes, like it shows in that uh, picture here. Absolutely ideal. You can cut little bits off and protect your joints, and you know put um, protection back and strength back into wires that you join that's the main thing so there you are that's that's something else i've got right now was there anything else well yes there was something else actually and i recorded this a little while ago um and it's all about hookup wire which quite frankly is the staple of everybody's uh, breadboard if that's not working right then your circuit's not going to work right Right, I just wanted to uh, share something with you about um, some hookup wires. You can see here I've got this rather dilapidated old reel of um, copper wire that's um, seen better days, but then it has been with me for many years. Now it's not tin, so it's gone very tarnished, which means that you don't get very good electrical connection on here without first scouring it. You see the end bit there is probably a little bit more shinier because I put some nylon scourers on it when I'm doing some hookups. In fact, here's a little breadboard we were working on in a previous video. You might remember it from a DS18B20 video, the one with dual um, temperature sensors. And this little bit of hookup wire comes from that reel. And as you can see, it's all very dull and didn't make very good contact, frankly. So I thought, right, time to upgrade. So I've got two samples of wires here. 
21 SWG, which is 0.8 mil, and 25 SWG, which is 0.5 mil. Now, the large one, 0.8, that is actually quite chunky, certainly thicker than uh, you'd get on most components, unless it's a very heavy duty component. It's great though, I mean, it does go into um, your board nice and easily. Well, having said that, there we are, I'm trying to do it while I'm looking at the camera. So that goes in, but it is quite, well, heavy duty as I said, but it works great. Um, now this one, the 0.5mm, that's closer to the size you probably get on most components, I think. And uh, well, that goes in just as easily, in fact easier because it's not so thick. Um, but it's just a tiny bit light. So given that um, that's 0.5 and that's 0.8, I suppose I really want something like 0.6. So let's have a quick look at um, where I got this and see what they do. Um, now, that was 21 and 25, so I really want a 23, which is this one here. Is that on the right one? Yes, yeah, so 0.6, there we are. So this um, table does calculate the stuff quite nicely. Um, goes right up to 50 and all the way down to zero and beyond. So yeah, that's great. So 23 is what I really want. What's 24? 24 is... 0.55, not much bigger than this one I've got here then really. So I bought these two samples, I say samples, they're two meters. So it was from these people here, Charge Electrical, they're a UK supplier. So I got 21, that's the thick stuff, and 24, uh, 25 rather. So they do a 24, that one there. They do whole 30 metres of it, 727, which, okay, it's not an insignificant amount of money, but it's not massively expensive, given that 30 metres will probably last you, well, years, I would think. And the brilliant stuff about this, of course, is it's tinned copper wire. So unlike my rubbishy stuff that eventually tarnishes and makes poor electrical contact, this stuff will be great for years and years to come. And it's sold as beautifully. If you look on this one here, I've just put a tiny blob of solder on there. Let me go back to the uh, other. You can just about see it. Look there where my thumbnail is. I've just put a tiny little blob of solder on. Um, and of course it immediately, it immediately adhered without any trouble at all. So soldering wise it works great. Um, it's just that the thickness, I don't know, I could go for a 0.55. I'd rather prefer a 0.6, which would be a 23 SWG. So I might hunt around. If not, I'll stay with these guys. I think the price is not bad and it is free postage. Um, yeah, so that's pretty good. So I just wanted to share that with you as I'm in the middle of sort of doing this because it's one of the sort of tools you need really when you're doing breadboard work. Yeah, you can have hookups with these DuPont cables, but sometimes when you're doing stuff for well, a bit like this really, you just want a little tiny piece of wire just to put in there. You know, nothing too major. And of course, when you're building stuff, let me just drag this project over that I'm still working on. Uh, just in case you watched my previous videos, this is the uh, stepper motor video. Let me go back to workbench. Uh, this is the stepper motor. As you can see, I'll put a, a nice picture on that piece of board now. And the temperature's really large, so you can look at it from the other side of the conservatory. And it works like a dream. I'm just uh, thinking about what edging I can put on, on these unfinished edges. Anyway, that's just a, a by the way. But let's have a look at the, the board. So this is... Um, strip board, sometimes variable if you buy the uh, real stuff, but strip board and both these sizes, the 0.5 go in quite easily and as I say it's about the size of the components, that's no problem at all and even this thicker stuff, 0.8 mil, also fits quite well, it worked very well in fact, no problem with that but it is quite heavy duty compared to some of the other wires on there so I think this one's a little bit heavier uh, I will be using it though, but I'm going to try and get a whole reel of something like 23 SWG. So, and remember, get the tin stuff, all right? Not not this rubbishy bare wire, because that will tarnish and give you poor connectivity. And it's much more difficult to solder. You think it wouldn't be, but um, it doesn't solder instantly. It needs more heat. Right, just thought I'd share that with you while we're here. Okay, back to the main video. Oh yes, one final thing then, all to do with hobbyists. Here's a whole selection of little tiny self-tapping screws. Now as you can see at the top I've marked them stainless at the top and then all these are just zinc 
plated number four, number six, and a couple of variants in the middle. Uh, let me open this up. Now these weren't cheap in the sense that I paid about, for all these I think I paid about £12, something like that, might have been 14 even, which is it's quite a lot isn't it? But once again I'm thinking, I bought 100 of each you see, to supplement the few that I had remaining, and I think this is now going to last me for the next, I would say five years, quite frankly. You might run out of one type more quickly than others, so I might find, you see, number fours like this, which might be useful for holding nano boards into into um, boxes and things it might run out of these quicker so you just buy another 50 of those to keep stocked up and you'll be fine but these are all zinc plated as i say these ones are a2 stainless steel that's what a2 stands for there's a4 which is marine grade but as i'm not making any model boats or anything i don't think i'll need that and uh, it means these stainless ones you can put outside and they'll never ever rust which is brilliant these zinc plated ones will eventually rust so I wouldn't use them outside, not exposed anyway. Um, now I can show you where I bought those. That was in fact um, eBay, I believe. Yes, it was. So let me just show you those. You might find them interesting for your project rather than scrabbling about. Just as a point of interest, the last few weeks I've been getting this more and more. Sorry, we couldn't complete your request. Please try again later. Every time I go to my purchase history, it just keeps coming up. Anybody else have this trouble or is it just me? Perhaps there's a setting on my machine or something, I don't know. Let's try it again. No, and again. Thinking about it. Yes. Right. Let's have a look to see where those little screws were. Here they are, look. So the um, I've got a hundred, hundred quantity, as it shows there, of the A2 stainless, that's 325, and the slightly smaller ones here 215 that wasn't bad actually i don't think and here's all the rest of them these are not stainless these are just zinc plated 345 265 those are all from mounts of 100 and really you want sizes four and six i think for arduino type stuff uh yeah i think that's probably about it right oh yeah there's a nice little fan look see that little fan we're having a heat wave in the uk at the moment well heat wave as far as we determine it over 30 degrees which is 90 plus fahrenheit and we're all dying so i bought that in fact i can show it to you here look here it is keeping me and my equipment nice and cool that's good i've got one of these at work as well it's a godsend right that was just a, a by the way that was okay anything else i can show you that i bought no, that's the scrapbook don't think you want about vacuum filter stuff do you a oh, barometric barometric uh, pressure sensor that's for a future project so is that oh yeah a pin extender that'd be good wouldn't it you can add more pins to your arduino just you by using i squared c that's going to be a future project quick one i hope right that's it that brings us to the end of this i hope i'm god this went on forever it was supposed to be nice and short but i'm going to edit it down so that it is nice and short 15 minutes or so ha huh, we'll see won't we we'll see great i hope that was useful um no circuits as stuff apart from that one i drew out on the um on the graph paper of course but uh, next video will be full of stuff and it's probably it's half an hour you see because it's talks about the code the construction the putting it all together photos so it's quite in depth that's the transmitter the 433 megahertz transmitter the very next one um jolly interesting to do and you might find it useful as well not for a cat run of course but you might have other uses for 433 megahertz transmitter and it uses the one wire and stuff and it's it's a nice little project to do so good in fact that i've got some more 43 three megahertz transmitters on order at this very minute so we are okay that's it i think that brings us to the end of all these little bits useful as they are and interesting as they are they're all going to be put into projects pretty soon and i'll make use of these lithium and solar cell batteries somewhere along the line as well okay that's it thanks for watching I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Please leave comments down below, subscribe, share, and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.